Paga does. Sure. So Paga was set up really to solve one key problem that I think is so fundamental and core to Nigeria meeting its potential, right, that we're all talking about. So if Nigeria is to meet its potential of a $200 billion consumer market opportunity, we have to have payments, right? So whether you're a business or you're an individual, you need to be able to pay people or to accept payments and do that in an efficient manner. Right. Um, so whether you're a business individual, whether you're banked or you're unbanked, that is that is exactly what we're trying to solve. So, so for us, what we've done is we started this company. Um, I started this company in April '09, and really what we've gone after is how do we simplify and solve payments for everybody, whether you're individual or your business or you're banked or unbanked. Okay. And what we've done is allow you with Paga, you can send money to anyone in Nigeria who has a mobile phone number. They don't need to be on Paga. They go to an ATM to collect the money without a card, or they go to an agent to collect the money. So a PAGA agent... Sorry, sorry, you, <laughs> lost, you lost me there. Okay. I so don't have a card. You don't have a card. You go to the ATM and you do so, a cardless no, withdrawal. Okay, I, w I want to pay Conga now. I bought yes. books, goods from Conga uh, and actually, I need to pay them. Good. Good. So what do I do? So, so what you do is yeah. you, you go to Conga and yeah. you see a pay with PAGA. Yes. Right, which he has agreed to do. I should say, you should go to Jumia. <laughs> you, you see a pay with Paga. Okay. Um, and you, you click on that. Yes. And you log into your Paga account. When you log into your Paga ah. account. No, so the beginning is I have to have a Paga account. To pay, yeah. to pay them. You have to, to have a Paga them. account, or you can walk into any one of our agents, which are like a MedPlus. You go to any MedPlus, mm -hmm. and you can say, I want to pay Jumia. And okay. here is the account. Here is the the. the the, the number I want to pay on Jumia. Okay. And here's how much I want to pay. Okay. So you don't have to have an account. So if you if you want to do things by yourself, you have to have an account. If you're happy for someone else to do it for you, you can walk into our agent to do it. And the reason why we built it this way is because look, 160 million people, and not everyone is at the same level of education to be able to, or want to do things on their own, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have to wait for everybody to become tech savvy and tech addicts mm -hmm. to be able to deliver services to them. They know what they want to do. They may not know what mobile payments is, mm -hmm. but they know, I want to buy this watch from Conga. I want to buy this thing from Jumia, right? Yeah. They know that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we want them to, to just be able to go do. So what we've done is we've created two avenues for consumers. One is the agent avenue, where you go to the likes of uh, uh, MedPlus, mm -hmm. uh, Tantalizers, direct. Public, direct, and they do the transaction mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Or where you do it by yourself, either through online a, through a, a, or on your mobile phone. phone. Okay. You can do it by SMS. Okay. You could go online to their sites and pay them, okay. or you come to our website and pay them as well. Okay. Um, or you could download an app to your phone okay. to, to do transactions. Okay. Now, now Jeremy, um, to be able to um, take part in e-commerce, internet has to be available, hasn't it? So how is this affecting e-commerce in Nigeria? Because in, um, penetration is not as much as we would like it to be, is it? Is it? So um, it is true that we see that the massive part of our traffic actually happens between 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So during work hours, when people are in the office and actually have access to the internet. <laughs> I'm sorry for the employers, but actually it makes me very happy. <laughs> uh, which actually is contrary from uh, the other websites that we own outside in, uh, in other countries where actually the peak of traffic happens before people go to work or after. after. That being said, I think this is one of the, the areas where actually Nigeria is going to leapfrog uh, the, uh, the mature markets in terms of uh, internet economy. Because we, what we see very strongly coming is a very fastly increasing rate of access through mobile devices, smartphones, and tablets. And we, also, we already see that happening in the US and Europe. People accessing uh, websites with tablets and mobiles. But here, the rate of uh, penetration is much faster than in the other economies. Mm -hmm. So I think that Nigerians are going to leapfrog the access of internet through computers and uh, laptops, mm -hmm. and they're going to very much ac start accessing it through iPads and mobile phones. So in that sense, access to broadband and cables, I don't think will be uh, as relevant as in other economies, because people will access it through MTN. OK, let me come right. back to Sim again. Uh, we are hosting the World Economic Forum Africa, mm -hmm. a regional conversation, debates, and discussion of issues. Yeah. Uh, 
what is it that Nigeria will bring to the table and what do we stand to gain in terms of e-commerce, inclusive growth and job creation as far as um, IT, web and the internet is concerned? Yeah, no, so I, I think if, um, if my understanding is correct, this is the first um, um, World Economic Forum Africa that's happening in Nigeria. It's previously yes. happened in Cape Town. In yes. Africa. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think um, it's, it probably speaks to the increasing economic importance of Nigeria, mm -hmm. the increasing uh, geopolitical importance of Nigeria. So even beyond e-commerce, it kind of, uh, I think it, it shines a spotlight on the country as a whole that in spite of our problems, in spite of our challenges, mm -hmm. there are some good things happening here. Mm -hmm and the country is starting to, to rise. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, from the point of view of e-commerce, it's really exciting because we can do with all the investment that we can get. I mean, some of the things we're doing are very heavy. They require a lot of capital. Um, and, and hopefully, even more than bringing in a lot of FDI, which is kind of the focus of the conversation, I hope we do have a lot of local capital. I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on foreign direct investment. We have a lot of local in investment that we could mobilize. And hopefully some of that starts to come to the fore also. Um, so, you know, in that sense, I think it will sort of shine. So shine what are the chances that. that we will actually, as a result of hosting the World Economic Forum Africa, what are the chances that we will actually get something positive in terms of foreign direct investment tangible into benefit. Nigeria, yeah. tangible benefit yeah. that we can see, especially so in the area of IT, web, and, yeah. um, and so on? No, I, I, think it's, I think it's very substantial. If you look at the business leaders and the political leaders that come to these events, um, many times, they, so Nigeria is probably one of those countries that suffers most a difference between perception and reality. People just don't know this country. Mm. And they have a lot of perceptions around this country. And when they come, they realize negative. a lot of, those a lot of negative yeah. perceptions. Uh. To, bring, to bring all of those people together in one place yeah. and to open it up and to see that you know, this actually is a real bustling economy yeah. where the vast majority of the people are just honest, good, working, good hard working people that are just yeah. trying to get by. I think that adds a lot of value. Um, I've seen that happen many times where a business leader is American, European, Asian and then comes here and then all of a sudden he decides, look, it's time to invest. I've actually been here and I've felt it. Um, so the WEF is, is great for that. It brings a lot of people together um, in one okay. place. And, okay. And so, uh, Ty, uh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I mean, I think the reality is it's not going to take one event, right? right? Um, I think it's, it's going to be multiple engagement and people coming to see that there are real opportunities here. Um, and that you know Nigeria is not asking for um, <clears throat> is not asking for aid, right? right? And we really what we're asking for is is for people That's to good. to come put your money to work, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and that you know aside from us, there's a, a budding group of entrepreneurs in various sectors, and for me, that's what excites me about, about it. And I think for Nigeria, there is, in terms of IT and the opportunity there, job creation is massive, right? I mean, both these companies probably already hire directly about 2,000 people. We hire about 170 people directly, and but if you think about network of agents, 4,000 mm -hmm. of them, many of them are already hiring people specifically because of PAGA. Right, so now you have another, and, I, and we have goals of twenty thousand jobs by twenty sixteen. Mm. Um, you know, and I think so. I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for job creation, for for you know, really driving entrepreneurship. Um, and I think that's going to be as we've seen in other countries around the world, right? So if you look at Korea, South Korea as an example, right? Entrepreneurship is what drove growth mm. of that country. Okay, let let me ask you this question then: Is Nigeria primed yeah. for this growth? in any way because before a foreign yeah. direct investor yeah. would want to bring money in, yeah. he's going to do his due diligence Absolutely. and he's going to look yeah. at the yeah. quality and caliber of people yeah. in the country yeah. that are prepared to yeah. do this work. Yeah. Is Nigeria prime for I think, it? I think we are. I think we are. I think we, um, on, on, on different levels, I, I think we are. On one hand, I think you know, even on the political side of things, right? Um, I think we've seen such strong interest in the private sector that I don't think we'll ever go back to the world of military rulers and all this stuff. So while political parties may have their differences and squabbles, and there may be things there, um, it's easier to do business in Nigeria today, right? So, um, you know, for those of us who are in regulated industries, we have to worry a little bit more about that. But in non-regulated industries, then you just, you know, you go about your business. Um, in terms of the human capital, right, um, we are growing vastly in human capital. I mean, I was, when Sim was telling me now his engineering team is in Nigeria, that was fascinating to me, right? Um, we don't have our engineering team in Nigeria, even though our team is led by a Nigerian, 
but it's not it's not in a 